Yes, we're going to start in Second Peter. In the invitation this afternoon, which we're calling After Peter. What comes after Peter? You know, I think too many things have been made of him as a purported leader or head of the church. That, that is never said in Scripture. Jesus is the leader, the head of the church. Although Peter was an apostle, and he was inspired by God, and he was a witness of the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus, all, all these things that are part and parcel of being an apostle. And so we should listen to what he says by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And in his second letter, which is also his last letter, he had some very pointed things to say. The second chapter is infamous for dealing with false teachers, and it's fairly, well, it's fairly strict, and, and some hard things are said, but that's the nature of error. Second Peter, in the first chapter, though, <clears throat> has these thoughts at the 12th verse beginning. He said, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, that is, of the growing of faith, the building of faith, one thing upon another, which is verses 5 through 7. But he said, I'll not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth, Yes, I think it right, as long as I'm in this tent, to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my departure. So in the second letter from Peter, he says in, well, uh, we would say euphemistic terminology, that he has to take this tent off, this tent being the earthly body, and he's leaving this tent shortly, as the Lord has shown me. He said, as long as I'm in this tent, it's right to stir you up. He's talking about this body, which is a tent, an earthly dwelling, 2 Corinthians 5, Paul wrote about this body as a tent that we have, and that if this tent should be destroyed, we have a heavenly tent, another tent in the heavens, not made with hands. So Peter, in saying this, is saying he's about to die. He's going to die soon. The Lord Jesus revealed to him that he would be dying soon because he's an apostle. And the thing that he says, especially at 2 Peter 1, verse 12, is, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, even though you know them and are established in the present truth. So the truth is with them. The truth has been written. They've heard from the apostles everything there is although the letters record some things that they said, of course, for those of us who weren't there to hear them talk. <laughs> um, I intend always to remind you, says another version at verse 12. Peter is leaving. He's dying. God, the Lord Jesus, is working directly with him by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, giving him visions and telling him what to do, and what he tells him is that he's going to die soon. And Peter writes to us saying, I intend always to remind you of the things that you already have. And again, at that 13th verse, he said, yes, I think it right. As long as I'm in this tent to stir you up by reminding you, stir you up by, by reminder He said, as long as I'm in the body, the right thing for me to be doing is to stir you up by way of reminder, which is also what he says in the third chapter, in the first verse, 
the second half of that verse, he's saying, I do stir up your pure minds by way of reminder in this, the second letter. But the second letter that he's writing, he said, I stir up your minds by way of reminder, your pure minds by way of reminder. It's a direct reference, chapter 3 and verse 1 is, to chapter 1 and verse 13. Yes, I think it right, as long as I'm in this tent to stir you up by way of reminder. It's clear that he begins the letter saying, I am about to die. But I'm not dead yet. <laughs> or as my favorite band says, I'm not done talking yet. <laughs> and I won't be till my head falls off. That's what they say. <laughs> but that's true. Peter says, I'm not done. While I'm in this tent, I'm going to stir you up by way of reminder. In fact, this letter is stirring you up by way of reminder. Well, that's interesting. And didn't he say there at the 15th verse of the first chapter, yes, moreover, I'll be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my departure. That's where we're getting the title after Peter. After my departure, after he dies, we will be able at any time to recall these things. He said, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after I'm dead. Hmm. So we have the truth. He writes a letter. He said as long as he's alive, it's good to remind us and that even this letter is a reminder. And yes, in chapter 3, he, at verse 1, he said, I now write you, beloved, the second letter. In both letters, I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments by us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Peter had a plan, you see, for what would happen when he was gone. He was an apostle, yes. He had the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, yes. And as he said there in the closing, in the closing words of the first chapter, the 16th verse, we didn't follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed to which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And what are we mindful for? It's chapter 3 and verse 2. He's reminding us to be mindful of the words spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. The, the ones, he said, who did not follow cunningly devised fables, who were eyewitnesses of his majesty, who were holy men of God, carried by the Holy Spirit. Whose words? His words. How do we have them after he's dead? It's chapter 3, verse 1. In both of these letters... I stir up your minds by way of reminder. And the reminder is what? The reminder is what he teaches, which is the truth that you now stand in, or they then stood in. What was his plan? <laughs> his plan was to write these letters, right? He knew he was going to die. It was not, you know, 
a surprise. Oops. We got one more place here in 2 Peter chapter 3. But it's not a surprise when he died, when his time came. The Lord told him he would die soon. And he wrote a letter to all the churches saying as much. Nobody was surprised by this. It's not as though everybody thought this was going to be a quick deal and that all the apostles were going to be alive and ready for Jesus to return to earth. Oh, that's what religious people believe today, and maybe some religious people then believed, but it's never what the Bible actually said. What you actually read is Peter saying, I know I'm about to die, and I'm going to make sure that you have a way to recall what I teach. And that thing is these letters. We have Peter's letters. They're the thing that reminds us what he teaches. The Lord who spoke to him and carried him in the Spirit to write the things that he wrote to write these letters told him to tell us to rely on those letters. You see that, right? It's clear this is what he's getting at. In the end, he speaks about the fact that Paul's letters speak of the same things. In 2 Peter 3, verses 16 and 17, in which there are some things that are hard to understand, true, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do the rest of the Scriptures. Paul's writings are Scriptures. In, In Peter's day, Paul's writings are already Scripture, and they're already being twisted. They were being twisted while Paul was alive. Have you ever read what Paul said? (laughs) You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but rather grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to whom be glory now and forever. Amen. Yes, Peter said, rely on the Scripture. There would be those who would come along and and twist it, either because they don't know it or because they reject it. They're ignorant or they're unstable but they're twisting the Scriptures to their own destruction. And you know that that's going to happen the same way that we knew that he knew that he was going to die. You understand he's saying it was not a surprise. It's not as though the church was scrambling in about 95 AD when John the Apostle died and Jesus hadn't come back yet. Now, oh man, what are we going to do? We weren't expecting this. No, no. That's not true at all. (laughs) The record is very clear. We were expecting this. And Peter already did what we're going to do about the fact that they're going to be gone. He wrote. They all did. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to hew to the Bible. We're supposed to demand book, chapter, and verse. We must have the Scriptures which includes the writings of the New Testament. That is the thing that keeps us from being ignorant and from being unstable. That is the thing that keeps us from being carried away, not carried by the Spirit, if you will, by listening to the words that He caused to be written, but being carried by the error of lawless men. Hold close to the Scriptures, demand book, chapter, and verse. This is what Peter had in mind. You notice what he did not do? He did not name a successor. He did not set up a presbytery or any other group, a council. He named no person. He he, he identified no eldership who were going to be the next ones to be treated as apostolic authority because there is no one else who should be treated as apostolic authority. Apostolic authority is exactly that, apostolic. It belongs to the apostles. And they're dead. Well, yes, they are. But they wrote, and they wrote knowing they would die. And they wrote knowing that what they were writing was Scripture. 
that this was the thing that we would hold close to and how we would be able to know the truth. You know, Paul said the same thing to the elders of Ephesus in Acts 20. Remember, he said, I now commend you to the Lord and to the word of his grace, which is able, right? Able to supply that rich entrance to cause you to grow, to give you an inheritance in the kingdom. All of the apostles on contemplation of their own departure left us with the Bible, pointed us to the Bible. There was never any intention of some other human organization or human personnel taking over for them. They were not going to be replaced. They were scaffolding, but the building was complete. So the scaffolding was no longer needed. It was just taken away. And we're founded on the word of Christ. So what are you going to do after Peter? Well, we're doing it. We demand book, chapter, and verse. We serve God according to what he says in the scriptures. That's what it is to be his people. Have you obeyed the gospel of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins? Have you done what the Bible says? Have you read Acts 2 and verse 38, how Peter told the crowd, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and receive the Holy Spirit's gift, the promises for you and for your children and for everybody far away. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's what the Bible says. Have you done that? We have water prepared that you might be baptized in his name if that's your need. If you are a Christian today and have not lived right, repent. Let us pray with you and for you that you might be restored to him. Brethren, we got to remember there's no accidents here. There's no confusion here. We're holding fast to the scriptures because the scriptures tell us to hold fast to the scriptures. <laughs> They weren't surprised. They weren't overtaken by death. There was no confusion in the church. There was confusion among religious circles. Oh, yes, because false teachers abounded. But no, the real church was never in doubt. Do you believe in God or do you doubt? Do you stand with the Lord God and his word? Or do you stand outside of his kingdom? Let us help you to obey the gospel. Let us help you to be restored to God. Consider your soul's estate. Ask for the prayers of the saints. Come to the front while together we stand and sing the song selected.